us to the fifth episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the 2020 GCE Science Paper 2. So the first episode focused on section A, while the second episode started from question B1. So if you haven't seen the previous four episodes, please check out on our YouTube channel. So question B4 leads A, Loma numero 1, define concentration. So we are just defining what concentration is. So when you're talking about concentration, you're talking about the amount of solute dissolved in a solvent or solution. That is what is known as a concentration. So concentration refers to the amount of solute dissolved in a solvent or solution. That is what is known as in concentration. So what is key in this definition is seen that concentration is referring to the amount of solute. Now this solute could be moles. Then they are in a given solvent which could be water or solution. That is what is known as the concentration. So Loma numero 2 of A state the SI unit for concentration. So the units for concentration are molality. So molality is the unit that you use for concentration. And this is the same as in the number of moles per decimeter cubic. So decimeter cubic is in the volume of the solution. Then the number of moles are what you are referring to as a solid in this case. Then the solvent is in this liquid or solution which is being measured in decimeter cubic. Loma numero 3 of A calculate the mass of potassium hydroxide that needs to be used to prepare 500 centimeter cubic of 0.25 molality solution in water. So we are required to calculate the mass. So how can we find the mass? The first thing that we need to do is we need to find the number of moles that are contained in this solution. So what's the relationship between the moles, volume and molality? So molality is given by the number of moles which is in the solute divided by the volume in this meter cubic which is in the solvent. So what do we have? So we know molality is given to us is 0 0.25. Then what's the volume? The volume is in this 500 centimeter cubic that we need to convert to this meter cubic by dividing by a 1000. Why are we dividing by 1000? Because in one decimeter cubic we have 1000 centimeter cubic. So to convert this to decimeter cubic we need to divide it by 1000. Then we are going to have 0 0.5 decimeter cubic. So now that we know the molality, we know the volume. So what we do is, is just now we cross multiply to solve for n because we are looking for n. So we cross multiply. So it will be 1 times n. It will be n is equal to then m times v. Okay. So what is m? You see 0.25 moles per decimeter cubic. Then multiply by what is the volume? The volume we see 0.5 decimeter cubic. So you notice that this decimeter and this decimeter cancels, then we are going to just end up with 0 0.25 moles multiplied by 0 0.5. Then we are going to end up with 0 0.125 moles. So these are the number of moles that we have in this solution. Now if you know the number of moles, we can easily find the mass 
of this one. So how can you find the mass? So we use the fact that the number of moles is equal to the mass given divided by the relative molecular mass. So we know the number of moles is this one, which we just found. Then we can find the relative molecular mass using the periodic table. Therefore, mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by relative molecular mass. So let us go to the periodic table and find this relative molecular mass of potassium hydroxide. So when you're on the periodic table, we have this is potassium hydroxide. So what is the mass number of potassium? You see 39. So this is 39. Then plus oxygen. Oxygen is 16. Then plus we have hydrogen is a 1. So when you add this, we are going to get 56. So 56 grams is the relative molecular mass. So now we know what that one is. We can go back and substitute. So we are going to have 0 0.125 multiplied by 56. This will give us 70 grams. So 70 grams is the answer when we multiply. So the 70 grams is the mass that need to be used to prepare this kind of solution in water. Question B, construct a balanced chemical and the net ionic equation for the reaction between potassium hydroxide and the sulfuric acid. Include state symbol. So, what do we have? So, we are starting with potassium hydroxide. So, the formula for potassium hydroxide is what we've been given from question M. So, this one is aqueous. So, this one we react it with him sulfuric acid so sulfuric acid as this formula which is aqueous so now what we are going to get is we are going to get a salt and water that's the standard equation so what will be the salt the salt will be potassium sulfate which is aqueous then plus water which is liquid. So now it's just a matter of balancing this equation. So this side we have one potassium, this side we have two. So the, the first thing that we do is try to introduce a two here. So that we're going to have two potassium, this side and two potassium, the other side. Then we come to oxygen. So we're going to have two plus four, which is six. Then this side we're going to have four plus one, which is five. So what do we do to balance this one? We are going to introduce a 2 here. Once we introduce a 2, we are going to have 2 oxygen plus 4, which is 6. So the oxygen is balanced. What is it next? We look at the hydrogen. So hydrogen we have 1 times 2, which is 2. Then plus this 2 is 4. Then this side we have 2 times 2, which is 4. So hydrogen is also balanced. Then in terms of sulfur, we have 1 then one then we have balanced this equation so now after balancing this equation we need to write it in ionic form so let us just break down this equation so we have two potassium cations so then we have this one which is hydroxide anion so it will also be two because of a two in front so with this negative one then this is also aqueous. Then plus, we also split this one. So this will be two hydrogen cation. Then we have plus the sulfate anion with negative two. Then this is equal to, so we are going to break this one, which will be two potassium cation, which is aqueous form, then plus sulfate anion which is also in aqueous then plus water which is a new product so this water is a two here so this is a liquid so what you notice this one and this one are the same they cancel then you're going to notice that this one and this one are the same they cancel 
so you cancel what is the same which does not change from the reactant side and the product side then we just remain with these two which will be two hydroxide anion then plus two hydrogen cation then this will give us two water which is liquid so this is in aqueous then this is also in aqueous so once you do this you are good to go and you get these 70 marks thank you for joining me in this episode please join me in the next episode as i look at question b5